friends, welcome to Buddy Time Podcast. I am Sin. Each week, me and my two buddies, Victor and Name, we gather to discuss and share our thoughts on different topics that relate to young adults in Thailand. You'll hear interesting real-life stories and experiences that may inspire you and enrich your life. So join us for some chats. This is a Buddy Time Podcast from Me Goody of Buddy Up. Hello again. Welcome back to Buddy Time Podcast. I am Sin. In today's episode about finding your passion, we have a special guest with us, and he will be sharing his definition of passion and his journey to finding passion. We will also touch more on the arts topic. And cover some points on the field of theater design and production. I'm so happy that he's with us. So let's welcome our buddy of the day, Sony. Please tell us a little about yourself. Hey, listeners, and thank you, Sin, so much for having me on Buddy Time Podcast. I just wanted to say that I'm extremely grateful to be here today. So, just a little bit about myself. I identify as a third culture kid. My parents are Taiwanese, and I. And had moved over to Thailand just before I was born. So growing up, I was raised in an international school. It was also here that I was first exposed to my passion for the arts. And for my bachelor's, I flew over to Canada and got myself a degree in fine arts with a focus in theater design and production, as mentioned by Sin just now. And I had lived there just a little under six years. So. I've had a bit of a chance to work after I graduated university. Fast forwarding to today, I am currently taking my master's degree in strategic communication management in Thailand, where I was fortunate enough to get to meet you, Sin. So I'm super happy about that. And so, in short, right now I am a full-time student, but also part-time managing a few of my Family rental homes in Bangkok, and also working in a few design and marketing campaigns for my family's brand called Pencom here in Thailand, and also some offices abroad. So you may or may not have heard about us, but we sell everything that has to do with stationery and in the realms of stationery. So yeah, that's the current rundown of my life so far. Nice to have Sony over. Sony and I were friends from our master degree class. Although we hang out for so many times already, we didn't really have the chance to discuss deeply about our passion. And after what Victor shared with us in our previous episode about passion, I am getting even more interested and curious to how everyone defines passion. And knowing you, Sony, to me you're someone with unique ideas and thoughts in mind. So, what is passion to you? That is such a great question. I think that passion is such a hard one to define, because I feel like the feeling of passion, and I say this word in terms of like with quotation marks, is experienced differently for everyone. So some people may identify passion as a job. Perhaps they like teaching, so they might become a teacher. And some may identify it as a quality within a job, like a person may have a, a passion for teaching because they enjoy the feeling of sharing their knowledge. Or if they are professors, maybe they enjoy the pleasures of researching. So I would say that for my case, the latter、um, version of what I said here is more true for myself. I believe that passion is a fluid term. So. I don't believe that passion is like a specific job. Like, oh, my passion is to be an astronaut. I mean, sure, you can be an astronaut for the rest of your life, which I think that is not allowed because I don't think you can be in, you know, in space for that long. But then what? You know, like I think there is so much more to it than just like the title itself. So, from my own experiences in the entertainment industry, I have changed my role several times actually. So when I was in high school. I thought acting was it, like my number one passion, the only thing I would do for the rest of my life. But as I entered university, I have discovered like a plethora of many other components that make up, let's say, like a performance. There is costume design, there is lighting design, there is directing, there is stage management, just to name a few. 
And I realized after getting to know these roles that my understanding for passion is no longer limited to just acting. I found out that my very own passion is a process of collaboration. And my passion is getting to know and learn from those around me. And my passion is the process of sharing and connecting with those people. So when people share their love for something, it's like a building block. That's how I see it. And it turns into something more holistic in the process. So how I see the world is like almost like individually, we have components like doors and stairs and bricks and trees and tables. But, you know, when we come together, we can create like a castle together. So to me, why I think I'm gravitated towards the entertainment industry so much is that it provides me the medium to express these passions. So if you asked me like a few years ago, like where I saw myself, I wouldn't have ever thought to say like, hey, Sin, you know, I'm a professionally trained stage manager. I wouldn't have thought that I would say that. In all honesty, I think that the title itself is not my passion, but it is like the crop that I harvest from this field that I experience some sort of, let's say, satisfaction, if that makes sense. So just to sum it up here, I believe that we all experience passion in different ways, but there is not a set rule, I think, to how to identify passion. But to me, it is probably as simple as um, something that I wouldn't mind be doing for long periods of time or even for the rest of my life and that I find satisfaction in sort of like eating, you know, like to all the foodies out there, you can hit me up if you want food because like eating to me is like a passion. I can do it for the rest of my life and it brings me satisfaction. That's how I see it. <laughs> wow. This is so different. I mean, the way you describe what passion is to you, I would never imagine I will hear this kind of explanation or description about what passion is. I think I will have to catch up with that a little. <laughs> yeah, but this is really interesting, you know, because from, again, I have to bring up uh, our previous episode, what Victor mentioned about what passion was like to him. And I think there is a little bit of similarity from your explanation with his explanation and I think you're so right that there is no definite way to define passion and we all see passion differently for me passion is something like the only one thing that you truly and deeply feel meaningful to the extent where you know you want to work on it for the rest of your life no matter what kind of difficulties lies ahead of you you know that this passion that you're going after has a meaningful purpose and so you would want to just keep working on it and this is how I see passion so you see to me passion doesn't really change but I also agree that we can have more than one passion as we grow and experience more in life so this is really getting interesting like how we all see passion differently now that makes me wonder how did you discover your passion what was your process that made you realize that you have discovered your passion? So I'm quite fortunate that my parents are very supportive of my passion. So growing up, I was allowed to chase for my dream and find my own place in this world. So I know it may not be the same for everyone, especially, I think, in the Asian community, where the arts may not be perceived to be as stable, where, you know, more economical fields like the sciences and businesses are better. So it truly is, to a certain extent, better in some ways. So they are coming from a place of a logic in some ways. But however, I am also a firm believer that if we love something enough and change this love from a feeling or a thought to action, nothing is impossible. So you just have to find the right balance that is right for you. So you asked me how I discovered my passion. Like I said before, I think there is no set rule to discovering passions. My story to how I got here today was that when I was in high school, I used to be excited for all the creative classes. And I think with a mixture of self-motivation, because I wasn't really like super bad at these subjects, so I could sort of like maneuver my way through those subjects. And also with the teacher's support, that I slowly believed in myself. 
So specifically, the uh, pivotal point in my career, in my young career, I think it was during one of my drama classes. So one time, a touring Comedia dell'arte group that had been invited to the school to do workshops with us, which I had also participated in, we were given briefs to do improvs on different scenarios. So while doing them, I was able to involve my audiences and I made them laugh and I felt a connection between myself and them. So it is, it is so hard to describe this feeling, but it was just like a gut feeling that really made me felt alive. Then after that workshop, my teacher, my drama teacher then had pulled me aside and looked me dead into the eyes. And then she said to me that she believed in me and that I should work harder and to refine my skills so that I could probably maybe use it in the future professionally. Also, like, I wasn't really a confident kid back then. And I also had like lots of self-doubt. So that was a really big episode that launched me and gave me the confidence to who I am today. So that is why to me, I think it's important in our lives and not just in the process, and discovery of our passion that we surround ourselves with the right people. The people who you think can help you become the best version of yourself. Like in my case, a little incident like this one of encouragement from my teacher and my friends really opened doors for me. It was really quite an incredible experience when I think back about it. But as I get older too, I also realized that not everyone will get to find their passion or be employed in their dream job. So I urge, if this is you, to go out and try new things. Don't limit yourself to any place, because I believe that if you limit your passion, then you're limiting your own growth and opportunity at the same time. So this is also true to those who already are comfortable in their place. If you already discovered your passion, Don't be discouraged to apply it to new places like I did by applying a lot of my love for stage management, these skills that I've learned on campaign management in firms that, you know, that seems to have no relation at all, like theater and business, like what? And I I can still find joy and, and excitement in doing so. So I see it almost like a science where you mix different elements with one another and you create a different compound in the process. Like what Forrest Gump's mom once said to him, you know, like life is like a box of chocolate. You never know what you're going to get. Like, you know, who knows? You might just surprise yourself, whether it's in the process of discovering or the process of rediscovery. You mentioned about gut feeling, and this is something that I am working on lately. Try to listen to your intuition. They could mean so much. And I really mean it. The gut feeling can be something really powerful sometimes. And also you you said, surround yourself with the right people. You put yourself in a supportive community. And that is so true as well, because to some extent, the people around you does affect you in so many ways. So yes, we should always put ourselves in a supportive and positive community. So sounds like you also went through a self-exploration kind of journey. And the school, the university experience probably play a big part in that process of you discovering your passion. So did you also experience some difficulties or challenges throughout your process? And how did you overcome those challenges? That is such a great question. So a lot of the times I hear people say that passion is something that would make you wake up every day looking forward to what you will be doing. I I do agree to this statement. I feel like passion should be something that motivates you to be a better self every day. But oftentimes what people don't really mention about as well is that, and and that I've experienced for myself, is that the hardship that come with passion. I think that you've also mentioned about this in the beginning of this talk as well. How, you know, you also have to overcome these challenges. A lot of the times I don't feel like people talk about this. So personally, I feel like it is unrealistic for one to always see the rainbows and blue skies and passion. Sometimes it feels like society labels the word passion in a way that once you have found it, it becomes the ultimate treasure in a way to your career path. 
so it sort of concludes who you are. This makes the idea of passion stagnant to me and uh, filled with only the repetitive positive views. So I'm not being a bummer here, and I'm not saying that we should have a negative view, but instead to sort of set like a baseline for ourselves in this process so we enjoy the process in the future even more. So I've done a few production design for short films in my life before, and I enjoy the role very much. So the role itself includes a lot of imagination and collaboration, which I love. And to be honest with you, there comes a time where it's just plain hard. Like, for example, sometimes you have to work with someone you have very different opinions with, or you happen to have to figure out all the logistics on a production and you just hate it. Like math, you know, like I just hate it. Like, why do I have to do math when I, I chose the art? And you oftentimes don't hear these pointed out when people discuss about passion. So I just want to also highlight here that passion isn't perfect. I can almost guarantee that everyone will, in the process of discovering their passion, find something that they do not enjoy as much within it. So that, and that's okay. Like, don't be discouraged by it. If you can tolerate it on your worst days and feel fulfilled on your best days, I feel like the chances are you have found what your passion is. So my advice to myself on how I overcome my own challenges is to keep doing what makes me feel most myself and accept that there are bad days too and that it does not discredit my passion for whatever I am working on. That's so nice that you actually pointed that out about the kind of difficulties that everyone would face during the process of discovering our passion. And that passion is not always a beautiful dream or beautiful story. And in those times, you will face some of the worst situation. And probably those tough times would hit you quite hard to the point that you would start questioning yourself, doubting yourself, whether you still want to go on with this thing that you love or not. I agree. And it's so true that we're so used to talking about the good side of passion. And oftentimes we kind of forgot that, oh, there is actually bad side of passion as well. And somehow we just didn't really want to discuss it or face it. But it's really nice for you to remind us about that. And we definitely have to think about that as well um, throughout our journey to finding our passion or throughout our journey to working on our passion. Well, now that you have overcome those difficulties already, but do you sometimes question yourself, especially about your passion? What do you think makes you doubt yourself? If so, do you still believe in yourself and this passion that you have? Of course, I still believe in myself, but it would also be a lie if I like, didn't say that I doubt myself all the time, even when I'm doing what I love. I sometimes ask myself, you know, like, hey, Sony, are you sure you really like what you're doing? Like that, that is a constant like question that's always in my mind because I'm still, you know, life you learn throughout every day of your life. And it, it's a process of discovery and rediscovering as I said before. So I mean, I bet that like you do too, right? Like doubt yourself, like everybody does. So I think doubting is a good sign. Like it means that you are still growing and trying to understand the world and the situation that you are in. So I don't feel like we should look at doubting ourselves as in, in a bad light, in a negative view. So that is why I strongly believe that passion shouldn't be just one thing. It can be many different things. It's always evolving. So you are your biggest cheerleader and know that there is only one you in this world. And that already, to me, is something irreplaceable. So yeah, like my explanation about how I love eating, but at the same time, you know, I love to stage manage, but I also like to do production design for films. Like all these things can be a passion. Passion doesn't have to be just one thing. You can apply it anywhere. And, and doubting in the process only makes you grow stronger. Well, I agree that we will have questions for ourselves throughout the whole journey. To me, I feel like it's okay to question ourselves, but 
instead of asking questions, it's more like, what kind of question do we want to ask ourselves in this process? What I mean by what kind of question should we ask is like, are we asking this question to put ourselves down, or are we asking this question to reconfirm our determination, our passion, our love for this particular thing that we're doing? Exactly this, Sin. Exactly this. Don't ever put ourselves down. Yeah. So it's really good to have questions and keep asking questions, but just. Make sure that you're not asking questions that make you feel even worse after that. It should be constructive. Yeah. So, just be aware of that while we question ourselves and keep ourselves moving on. Well, since you have a background in the theater design and production, this is another field which I am unfamiliar with. Can you maybe share your experience or some interesting things about? Um, this industry or the difficulties about working in this industry? Yes, of course. So I feel like you have to try it to know, or like it to know what it's like in this industry. It's like crazy. Like any other industry, it is definitely competitive in its own way. And one of the biggest obstacles that I have faced working in this field is that you'll almost always have struggles with funding. So since art is a pleasure and entertainment product, and not a hundred percent necessary per se, rarely you see like big chunks of money granted for the project that you're working on. So it's actually really funny. I was thinking about this the other day. So as a film student or theater student in school, I don't know if you noticed, but as students, we have to, in almost most cases, pay for our own thesis films or. Uh, our own equipment to produce our own stage plays. So, in contrast, you don't really see the science students, for example, buying their own scales, beakers, and flasks to the lab, do you? So, I find that like very, very interesting, like a very interesting thought. So, in many ways, this treatment in school is somewhat a reflection to what it's like in the real world, in my opinion. Unless you are one of those big companies like Broadway or Disney, I guess like you don't really suffer as much in terms of like the funding for entertainment and the arts. But nonetheless, I think that it is also because of the lower pay and the surprisingly low production budget that we artists we will understand each other like what I said here uh, become so close to one another during the process. So our creativity is always put to the test. So instead of having like an actual table, for example, we might have to substitute that for a cardboard box and maybe with tablecloths on top, just to you know signify that that is a table. If you get what I mean. And when that one element changes, most times everything else will also move to fit the change. So the creative process goes on and on like a wheel. So although it is fun in its own way. I'd be happy to also work in a production where I have, like, in a in a beautiful, perfect world. I would also would love to be in a production where I have enough budget to not second guess my choices all the time. But you know, that's the way it is. And another great advantage to me, I think, in this industry is that I think the industry feels really active. So you always feel like you're on the go. Which is what I love because I don't imagine I'd enjoy being stuck in a cubicle office all day every day. So with each project, you also get to meet a variety of different people with their own versions and ambitions of their love for the art. And you know, we go into a production co-creating it together. So we almost feel like we're creating a baby together. That sounds a bit weird, but. It's the way it is, and it is a really funny.、Uh, it is a really fun process too, and also worthy of mentioning that the working hours are unpredictable and sometimes even horrendous. But alas, here I am, loving every minute of it. I have a spontaneous question for you. Yeah, of course. Since you mentioned about how the reality, especially on the funding for a creative project, and that you have to adjust your Creativity according to the budget that you have. So my question is, do you think your creativity can be forced to even trigger more creativity because you have a very restricted budget? Does that force you to think 
deeply or think in an even more creative way to how you want to you know, put this off? Or does this restricted thing limit your imagination or creativity? I feel like it's sort of like, what, what is the word for it? Like a sword with two pointy ends or something like that. <laughs> it's like sort of like a yes and no question because I feel like, yes, it does definitely like with the limited resources, like with, with anything, actually, you have to sort of learn to adjust yourself in the process, especially within the art. From my own experiences, with a limited budget, you start to have to think about what you want to prioritize within the work. And that in the process really helps you think and really helps you grow that sort of toolkit that you have within yourself. Like for me, as a designer with a limited budget, you can think about like maybe which character needs what sort of, you know, clothing pieces that would be more important and would contribute more to what the show is about and what the director wants to show within the production. So you start to sort of like pick and choose what is the most important thing. So in some ways in the creative process, having that limit really helps you refine your details and making the choices that you make more important and more uh, precise and crucial. And so that you don't end up having pieces that you end up being like an extra piece that really isn't really needed. And with that, I've learned from being like a costume designer as well, that that skill I've honed into using it on stage management. And, you know, I learned to prioritize a lot of the time and a lot of the people and a lot of the resources that I have. What is more important? Like, who should I call right now? Or how should I arrange the timing for a certain production to run as smoothly as possible? So I feel like, yes, budget does really make the creative process more creative in some ways. But at the same time, if you really want, let's say, like to have an elevator, an actual elevator built into your set, but you don't have the budget for that, like that would also cripple your creative process. Like that is a centerpiece that would really shine and really give, like if it is a piece that would really make your creative statement come through in this piece and you don't have it then in that case, I feel like budget really would be needed, if that answers your question. Yeah, I really like your answer. I think I have more idea what theater design and production is now and with the stage management thing. Sounds very interesting, but it's something that I would never see myself in it. Would you like to try it yourself? I think I would be happy to be one of those assistant, you know, like assistant to the stage manager. That is actually where I started in my whole like stage management career. I was the assistant stage manager and it's such a good time Sin. like you learn so many skills from just this role. Before this, like, you know, when I only knew about acting, I thought productions like what you see in films, what you see on stage, people normally focus on only the actors and don't give enough credit to the people who are behind the scenes. And most of the times when, you know, when you watch a film or watch something and then you're like, wow, like. That is great. I feel like the feeling that you get, it's a whole collaborative process. Like people made it, like everybody who contributed to it made it perfect and not just the people you see like on a literal sense. And I feel like those people don't get enough appreciation in this kind of realm. So I feel like the next time, if you feel like something is great for all the listeners out there, also remember that, you know, all the other people, like the costume designers, the lighting, the the stage, the you know, the set, the everything, you know, stage management, the, the directions that's been taken, all these things contribute to the perfection that you feel. So watch the end of the credit when it rolls, you know, who, who designed that costume that your favorite character is wearing. Like these little things really give, really give these artists a space to shine in their own way. It's a way for you to show them your appreciation. Yeah, I think with this whole project, it's always about teamwork. And it includes so many different teams, the effort that they put into it. And it's not just the actor, the actress, or the director. It also covers people behind the scene to contribute their creativity and their times and hard works into putting all this together. And I think that contributed a lot to how how we feel about a certain scene, like you said. I remember... When I was little, I went to watch this 
Naraya stage thing. I forgot what exactly it is, but the only thing that impressed me so much was the stage, the feeling that I got from the moment they opened the scene, the fox coming in, actress actors started coming in as well, and also the lightings, the way they put on those decorations. Even before the whole crew came out for performance, I was already impressed by the stage, the decoration of the stage, the feeling, the ambience, the atmosphere that they are trying to put. I think this is like what you have been trying to tell that the people behind this whole creation thing it's so important. They also should take as much as credit on to this project. Well, I think before we finish today's talk. Do you have any advice for those who might be considering of getting into this industry in Thailand? So, in terms of uh, general advice, I would just say to keep an open mind and celebrate the diversity around you and enjoy every moment of it, including the lows. But in terms of advice for working in the entertainment industry in Thailand, I would be a hypocrite to give you a. <laughs> To give you any, since I have yet to experience it for myself, unless any listeners here has a job they'd like to offer me, we can definitely discuss after this. <laughs> But I know that on episode four of our Buddy Time podcast here, my good friend Victor also brings up really great points on what it's like to work in the industry in Thailand. So absolutely check that out if you haven't already. Again, I have to say. Hearing other people share their opinions on passion and some life experiences have provided me with so many new perspectives. So reach out to Sony as well if you want to discuss more about stage management or some possibility of building a new project. And thank you so much, Sony, for sharing your stories with us. Thank you, Sin. I hope we can do this more often in the future. Definitely. For those who are still trying to figure out your passion, we hope that you have gained some ideas on how to start discovering your passion in today's episode. And thank you again for being with us. We hope you enjoy today's buddy time. Feel free to follow me, Goody, on Instagram at m e g o o d y t h for more updates on our show and activities. Share your questions or ideas with us anytime. Hope you will join us again next Thursday. Until then, have a great day. Bye.